Hi, I'm Spiders, and take a look at this slow-mo comparison of different FPSs. As you can probably tell, the higher FPS clips look much smoother than the lower FPS clips. Really quickly, in case you don't know, FPS is the amount of frames per second your computer is able to render, which is then translated onto your monitor. As you can see here, at 15 FPS, the game looks much choppier than at 60 FPS, so the more FPS you have, the smoother your game looks, and also the less input lag you have, which is especially helpful in Deep Woken, where you need to react and parry quickly. But one thing to be noted is that in order to see this difference in FPS on your monitor, your monitor needs to have a high enough refresh rate to support the amount of FPS you want to see, also known as Hertz. The amount of Hertz your monitor supports is the frequency at which your monitor can display frames, so in order to see 144 FPS for example, you would need a monitor that supports 144 Hertz or higher. If you want to check out how much Hertz your monitor supports and also how much FPS you're able to get, check out this website here called testufo.com, which is a pretty standard benchmarking website for this kind of thing. Now by looking at this, you can see that it says that I can get 240 FPS right here, but looking at these comparisons, it might be kind of hard for you to tell the difference. Actually, you shouldn't be able to tell the difference. This is because YouTube actually limits the amount of FPS you can have on a video to 60. But to get around this, as you saw in the intro, we can slow down the video so that it's at one fourth of the speed, and now the difference should be pretty clear. Anyway, I'll be using the slow down technique in the background footage of this video so that you can see the actual difference in deep open gameplay. Alright, so like I said, I'll be slowing down the background footage of this video so that you can see the difference between what it would look like at 60 FPS compared to 240 FPS at key points in fights, such as when you're pairing guard breaks, and also when you're like kind of whipping your camera around a lot on offense too, because it's also helpful for seeing what your opponent's doing and keeping track of them during those times too. And while that's going on, I'll also tell you some of the things I noticed after playing on 240 FPS. Alright, so a little bit about my background, I've only really played on three main devices, which were a 2007 iMac, and after that an Xbox One S, and after that an iMac 2021 M1. Now admittedly, none of these except for really the Xbox were my first choice, since gaming on a Mac really is not the best option out there for sure, and I can tell you that from a lot of experience myself. But more importantly for this video, all three of these devices were locked to 60 FPS. So up until I got my new PC near the end of March, I've always experienced 60 FPS for my entire life. So it was a pretty big jump, going straight to 240 FPS with a 240Hz monitor I got as well, for around $400, which admittedly was not cheap. When I played Deep Open for the first time on my new 240Hz monitor, the difference was very, very noticeable. I'm telling you the difference was life changing. Well, maybe not life changing, but you know, it was pretty noticeable, that's the point. Everything was way smoother, and it was honestly almost a little overwhelming at the start, being able to see everything. But anyway, you get used to that kind of thing pretty quickly, and so far it's been about a month since I first started playing on 240FPS. Now getting into how it actually affected my Deep Open combat, the biggest thing I noticed were that it was much easier to deal with guard breaks and also light weapon. Now I guess this isn't super surprising since these are the main things that rely on reaction time and being able to clearly differentiate between your opponents attacking and not attacking quickly as well. And by the way, in case you're wondering, my reaction speed actually went from around 270 FPS when I was on a Mac to averaging 190 on my new setup. So everything added together had a pretty big difference. I was honestly kind of surprised. But anyway, first about guard breaks, I've always had a really hard time parrying guard breaks, especially in parry trades. And some top any West players definitely know this about me. But after getting a 240 hertz monitor, all of a sudden it's way, way easier easier to parry guard breaks, by far, it is super noticeable. And it is also way easier for me to tell when my opponent's using a guard break now versus an M1 or something else. Besides that, light weapons are also much easier to react to. When I was playing at 60 FPS on a Mac, I had to be super locked in all the time in order to actually be able to react to light weapon M1s. It was so bad that if I came home tired from school, it was literally impossible to fight against light weapon users and I would lose every time, at least for me personally. But now after getting my new setup, it is way, way easier to react to dagger M1s, and I can actually play whenever I want now, which is definitely something that I can appreciate. So those were two main things I immediately noticed were much easier to deal with when playing on 240 FPS, which were light weapon and guard breaks. Now I'm not saying that you'll never struggle to defend against guard breaks and light weapons ever again, because both of them are very strong, especially light weapon, light weapons always invested, but it is definitely much easier to deal with those on the defensive end. Now I would say that in my opinion, playing on 240 Hertz is much more helpful on the defensive end than the offensive end, but I still say that it is pretty noticeable on the offensive end too. Now the reason I say this is because especially for me on Gale, when you're trying to launch a sequence of offensive attacks on someone, you need to be ready to switch to defense at any moment because to break out of combos, people will attack a lot. So while you're on offense, you also have to be paying attention to your opponent so that you can defend if necessary. And there's always a balance between offense and defense. So I would say it's helpful on the offensive end as well, but I wouldn't say it's as distinctly noticeable as on the defensive end. But that's out of the way, something that I'm sure a lot of you might be wondering is how it affected my ranking. So with that, while I was on 60 FPS before I got my new setup, I was averaging consistently top 250, sometimes scratching top 100. Now in this April season, when I got my new setup on 240 FPS, I've been able to remain consistently top 100 and often top 50. Especially right now, actually, I'm pretty high as you can see from the screenshot. Pretty happy about that. But I must make it clear to you that this season is especially weird for time rankings, and I can't really call myself a top 50 player yet. Now the reason for this is if you've been paying attention to the comp scene, then you know that it's a little bit dead right now. It's actually very dead right now. Everyone is gone. It is crazy. 
So yeah, with Type Soul's popularity right now, and also Deep Open PvP being in a really bad state, almost all the top players, at least in my region, are gone. And I'm sure it's the same for other regions as well. It's really sad, but the result of this is that time is kind of inflated right now with rankings. So since none of the top players are on, it's way easier to get top 50, top 250, that kind of thing. So this is probably the easiest point in history to get top 250 or top 50 or anything like that. So I'm sure that if those top players came back, I would not be top 50 and probably floating around somewhere in top 100. So yeah, I just want to make it clear, the season's a little bit weird right now, but the rank has gone up after getting the new setup and I think it will stay that way even after everyone comes back, hopefully. And playing at higher FPS definitely has its advantages. So now, all of that being said, is it a must to play in 240 FPS or 144 FPS instead of 60 FPS? And also, is it worth it to buy a new monitor in order to play deep one at higher FPS? Well, for the first question, I would say it depends a little bit. Like, if you're trying to be at the very top, then having more FPS is definitely helpful. It is, it is noticeable for sure. But that being said, you can definitely reach a pretty high level with just 60 FPS, which you can see from myself, actually. I was able to reach top 250 with 60 FPS, although admittedly, it took months of training and practice, so by no means was it easy. I also think that it was a good thing that I was using Gale while on 60 FPS, because Gale emphasizes a lot more on offense than defense, and like I said earlier, having FPS is probably more important on defense. That being said, it is for sure helpful, so if you have the opportunity to play on higher FPS, make sure you do. Also for the second question, which is, is it worth it to buy a whole new monitor to be able to support 240Hz for Deep Vulcan? Now, my monitor costed $400, like I said earlier, which is by no means cheap at all, but it's probably on the more pricey end since it got a 27-inch monitor, while there's also 24-inch monitors out there too, which a lot of people get, so it'll probably cost you at least a couple hundred dollars. Now, most people will probably say it's not worth it just for a Roblox game, but... I guess that kind of is since I don't play Deep Vulcan. But if you have other uses as well, such as playing FPS games or stuff like that and use your computer a lot, I'd say that it could be a worthy investment, with Deep Vulcan as a side bonus as well. But of course, it's up to you and your situation, so it's for you to decide. But also make sure that your PC is powerful enough to run 240 FPS, since you don't want to waste money on a monitor that you can't even take value from. Also, one last thing, I'm pretty sure most people know about this by now, but just in case you don't know, Roblox by default locks your FPS at 60. So, in order to go past 60 FPS, you need to use an FPS unlocker. So, if you want to do that, just press the Windows key and then search Roblox Player and, and click Open File Location and click Open File Location on this again. And over here, make a new folder by right clicking, clicking New, and go into Folder and name that folder Client Settings. Just like this and open that up and make a new file and make that file called client app settings and then make sure that the extension is .json in order to see that make sure that you have the view set to be able to see that so go over here if you need to go to show so make sure that when you have this view open that there's a little check bar next to it and then just paste in the text off in the description and make sure you replace this number right here with whatever your refresh rate gets capped at so mine is capped at 240 like, like you saw earlier so i would set 240 but if your monitor only supports 144 hertz you'd have it at 144 etc this was just a really quick explanation sorry for being quiet it's really late right now and if you want to see how to do on mac check out this video at the timestamp 257 it's kind of where i go over here so yeah pretty simple but if that doesn't work for you then check out nova's video on it uh, just looking this up. He's pretty much the guy that popularized this in the d community, so definitely go check this out if, if I was confusing. Anyway, this was my take on everything I've learned as someone who went from playing on 60 FPS for years to playing on 240 FPS. If you've played on more than 60 FPS before, let me know what it was like for you switching to higher FPS for the first time, since I'm interested if it was a noteworthy change for you, or if you think I'm overreacting. <laughs> like and subscribe for more top content, and see you in the next one.